It has been two months since Russia invaded Ukraine. When Russia first invaded, many experts around the world predicted that the war would end with a Russian victory within a week. Ukraine has endured the war for more than two months and there is support from the West, but the decisive reason why the war is turning into a long-term war is that Ukrainians have been fighting with a determined will to protect the country, regardless of whether they are men and women. It is not an exaggeration to say that the Ukrainian people's resolute resistance to war has moved people around the world and has drawn unprecedented support from democratic countries. U.S. President Joe Biden has made a bold decision to secure victory in the Ukraine war. That's why he asked Congress for an additional $33 billion per month budget to support Ukraine, which is being invaded by Russia. President Biden said he would spend $20 billion on arms and other military aid. $8.5 billion in direct economic assistance and $3 billion in humanitarian and food aid. Prior to this request, Congress had approved $13.6 billion in military and humanitarian emergency assistance. But within a month, the U.S. government came up with an additional support plan that more than doubled the effort. The amount agreed to this time is equivalent to a whopping one-fifth of Ukraine's GDP, which was about $155 billion. In particular, the $20 billion for military aid is about a third of the amount Russia spent on defense last year. President Biden delivered a speech to the public at the White House on the 28th. We are not attacking Russia, we are helping Ukraine, which was invaded by Russia. Biden said in his speech, and Biden said, the cost of this fight isn't cheap, but the price of giving in to the attack will be more expensive, he said, suggesting plans for further assistance to Ukraine. In this regard, the Wall Street Journal reported on the 28th that the U.S. has sent about $4 billion worth of military equipment to Ukraine this year. And the media also reported that weapons provided by the U.S. ranged from small drones to helicopters, javelin anti-aircraft guns, stingers, and howitzers. In addition, the Wall Street Journal reported that this additional military aid will include artillery, armored vehicles, and anti-aircraft systems that the Ukraine forces used effectively on the battlefield which will greatly enhance their ability to respond to the Russian army. In particular, the Wall Street Journal reported that by expediting this additional weapon support, the Ukrainian military will be able to assist in the fight in the Donbass region and preferentially send weapons optimized for the Battle of Donbass. The Wall Street Journal reported in another report that Russian forces are making slow progress in the Donbass region and failing to make a decisive breakthrough because of strong resistance by the Ukrainian forces, which are supported by Western weapons. Alexei Estrovich, aide to the Ukrainian presidential office, predicted that additional arms aid from the West would be at a level that could completely change the balance of power by the end of May, reported the Wall Street Journal. President Biden also called for a package bill that would strengthen the judicial crackdown on Russia's emerging conglomerate of oligarchs. The U.S. has imposed extensive sanctions on the oligarchs who have built close ties with President Vladimir Putin for their support of the invasion of Ukraine with the enormous wealth they accumulated under the protection of the Russian regime. So the United States is asking Congress to pass a bill that will strengthen the judicial power to freeze and confiscate their property. President Biden said he would use the money secured by confiscating the wealth of Russia's emerging conglomerates, that is, the oligarchs, to help rebuild Ukraine. Currently, according to the U.S. government, assets such as yachts, helicopters, real estate, and works of art confiscated by the U.S. and European countries from oligarchs with ties to Putin amount to $30 billion. Meanwhile, on the same day, the U.S. House of Representatives passed amendments 
to the land list program that would facilitate arms aid to Ukraine. The amendment, which was passed unanimously in the U.S. Senate three weeks ago, was also passed with overwhelming support in the House of Representatives with 417 votes in favor and 10 against. In a word, this land list program gives the president all the power to support Ukraine with arms. And according to the president's decision, he could provide unlimited U.S. arms to Ukraine. This law was enacted in 1941 during World War II to provide supplies for war to the Allied forces facing Nazi Germany without complicated procedures. At the request of then British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, US President Franklin Roosevelt promoted the policy and after 81 years, the recipients of aid are now people in Ukraine. As soon as President Biden signs the amendment, if the amendment goes into effect immediately, Ukraine will only have to get the weapons it needs from the US and then pay the US when the war is over. In addition, the United States has taken measures against Russia threatening Europe with energy as a weapon. First, the US proposed a way to divert the amount of natural gas it is currently selling to Japan and other countries to Poland or Bulgaria. In addition, the Wall Street Journal reported on the 28th that the European Union is discussing a long-term contract with the United States for liquefied natural gas LNG, supply in the order of several decades to reduce its dependence on Russian natural gas. This difficult decision required significant investment for the U.S. as well, but the U.S. was willing to participate to deter Russia's victory. The United States seems to be showing a determined will to bring Russia down and completely drain its power so that it does not dare invade other countries in the future. Putin's invasion of Ukraine seems to have been a huge mistake. Russia as a nation, little Putin, and the Russian people all seem to be in big trouble.